volume data to one. Let's put Heimdall on a Synology NAS. And if you don't know what a Heimdall is, it's just a, uh, it's a custom homepage that you can make. So once you've got a bunch of Docker apps and it gets super annoying and confusing to try and remember where they are, like what the IP address and port number is and everything, you can use a program like Heimdall to make a really simple homepage. There's a couple of other homepages out there too. I think this is the easiest one to get started with, but it also... It's also pretty well organized. So I, I don't think that, I think this is a great one to use, especially if you don't have too many bookmarks that you need to get to. But yeah, let's go through it. So I'm gonna start off by going to linuxserver.io and that is the Linux server community homepage. And then I'm gonna click on docs and then container images. And I'm gonna scroll down to where it says Heimdall. Ba -ba -ba. Heimdall, here we go. And then I just want the Docker Compose for this. I'm going to scroll down the main page and skip all of this useful text that tells me how this works and how to install it and everything. And right here, Docker Compose. That's all that I need. So I'm going to copy this blurb here, and then I'm going to go back to my Synology NAS. And then in my Synology NAS, I only need one program, and that is Container Manager, which if you don't have, you can just go to the Package Center, type in Container Manager, pretty close, and then click on Container Manager, and it should install. If it's not showing up for you, that means it's not officially supported by Synology for your model of Synology NAS, but maybe Google around and see if others have gotten it to work on your model. So once I'm in Container Manager, I need to scoot this over because I'm going to open up a uh, I'm gonna open up File Station here in a second. I'm gonna click on Project Create, and I'm gonna type in a project name. So I'm gonna call this one Heimdall, and then for path, you can name it whatever you want, by the way. I'm just gonna call mine Heimdall, because that's pretty simple. And then for path, let's make a path, and this is where all the Heimdall-related files will live. So I'm gonna click on File Station, and then click on my Docker share, which you should have once you install, once you install Container Manager, you should have a Docker share. And then I'm gonna do right-click and create a new folder, and I'm gonna call this one Heimdall. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it start page if you want. So I've got my Heimdall folder. Let me go back here to Container Manager. So for path, I'll set that folder as the path. So I'll click on Docker and then Heimdall. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think it's Heimdall. And then source, we're going to create a Docker Compose.yaml, which is just a text file. And I'm going to paste all that text in here that I got from the Linux server.io Heimdall docs page, just this guy right here. And this is pretty easy to set up as far as most of this stuff goes. We just need to change a couple of things here. So one is going to be the PUID and PGID, which I've done in a lot of tutorials before. So you might already know how to do that. And you can just fast forward through this. But if you've never done this before, you can click on Control Panel and then click on Task Scheduler. I'm going to get rid of this and act like I've never done it before. And then we're going to create a new scheduled task, a user-defined script. And I'm going to call this task Get ID. And I'm going to uncheck Enabled. And then I will click on Task Settings. And then under Run Command, you see this user-defined script section. We're going to type in ID space and then a greater than sign space. And then I'm going to go in back into my file station. I'm going to click on my Docker share. I'm actually going to right-click on it, Properties, and I'm going to copy this file location. And yours is probably the same as mine, um, unless it's not on volume one. And then after that, I'm going to add a forward slash and type in id.txt. So all that it's going to do is it's running a Linux command called id, and it's going to get the id of our user, and then it's going to drop that into a text file called id.txt in this volume one Docker folder. So that way you never have to remember what it is. You could just, it'll always be there in your Docker folder. Very convenient. Click OK, and then I'm going to right click this and click run, or I could just click that big run button up there. And then, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that I want to run that. Exit out of here. Okay, and then I can come back into File Station. I know, this is a lot. File Station, and then Docker, and then check it out. We got our ID.txt. If it's not showing up for you, make sure that you click out of that folder first and then back into Docker. So if I double click, I can see I've got a UID of 1028 and yours is probably different. And I've got a GID of 100 and yours is probably the same. So I'm gonna copy this back to Container Manager. So we can change the UID. I'm gonna change mine to 1028. You'll change yours to whatever yours was. And then for GID, I'll just use 100. TZ is short for time zone. I'm gonna type in, you don't have to change this if you don't want to, but I'm gonna type in America News New Yorks because that is my time zone pretty much. So volumes. It's gonna create a config folder for us. So we, what it's doing here, you can see that it's in two different spots, right? So we've got a path here to the left of a colon and then a path to the right of the colon. We don't need to change the path to the right of the colon. That is for Docker and Docker only. So we don't have to worry about that. But to the left, it wants a local path for us. So basically it's gonna create a folder of config files that we can on our end can back up or modify or change. Basically we'd probably just use it for 
backing up purposes. So let's give it a path. And I'm just going to type in period. So I'm going to get rid of that beginning part. It's going to be period forward slash config. And then I'm going to go back to file station into my Heimdall folder. And I'm going to create a folder called config. There we go. So I've got that folder. If you're curious about this period, it's a shortcut for basically wherever I am, I'm looking for this folder. So if I were to right click this guy and click properties and copy its file location, this period far slash config is the same exact thing as that file. I'm just making it a little bit shorter. I also like the period because if I were to ever move these around or move these Docker folders to another system for any reason, that's already configured. I don't actually have to change the folder names. So you can do this how you want, though. And then for ports, we cannot use port 80 and 443. If you've not checked out my networking basic video, I think the first one would kind of explain why. So we're going to change these. And I'm just going to use something simple. Let's do 890 and then 891. So this is for using HTTP, and this is for using HTTPS. And that's pretty much it. That's We've set up the install for Heimdall. So I'll just click Next. And then I am not going to set up a web portal via web station. I will click next and then start the project. Once it is created, it's checked. And then I will click done and it's going to install all this stuff for us. So it's going to pull all the files and do all the extraction and installing that it needs for Heimdall to work. And we've got a... So we got an exit code zero and then Project Heimdall was successfully built. So that's a good sign. That is a great sign. I'm going to close out of here. We got a green light, that's also good. I'm actually gonna double click on Heimdall. So I'm in project, I'm gonna double click Heimdall and then click YAML configurations. So this is that YAML text file that we created. And if we wanted to, we could stop this container and edit it if we need to. But actually there's just one thing I wanted and that's the port number. So 890 and 891. This is how we're gonna access Heimdall. So you're just gonna type in the IP address of your Synology NAS colon 890. Or you could do, um, if, you're, if you've seen my Network 101 video, you can actually do the name of your NAS dot local colon 890. So I'll show you. Let's do my Synology NAS's name is right here. So my server name is Night Vision. So I can just type in nightvision.local and then colon 890. And that should work. Check it out. We had Heimdall up and running. If you wanted to use your IP address, that's also pretty easy. See here where it says LAN 1 and then it's got a number? That's your Synology NASA's IP address most likely. It might be one of these other LANs, but it should just be the first one that pops up. So if I type that in, that would also bring me to Heimdall. If I wanted to use HTTPS, this will not work because HTTPS is on port 891. Oh, still not working. I don't know why that's not working. Oh yeah, it is working. All right, which is telling us that uh, it's suspicious, but we know that it's not suspicious because we installed it. So there we go, we're in Heimdall and you can start adding applications and bookmarks and everything. So let's add an application here. And then let's just say I want to add a shortcut to my Synology NAS. That did not work. I'm gonna do application type. Let me see here, do you have Synology? You do have Synology, so I'm gonna click Synology. We'll get a little logo here for DSM and then the Synology name. That's cool, I could change the color if I want. And then for URL, I'm just gonna type in HTTP colon slash slash nightvision.local. And then I can make a description and I'll type in volume data 21's public Synology NAS, not for hacking. You're not supposed to hack this and I misspell Synology, but I'm saving it, too late. And there it is. So now if I click this guy, it'll bring me to my Synology NAS. But there you go. So you now have, yeah, I know, I gotta accept this. But there we go. So I've got DSM up and running and that is how Heimdall works. So you've got your menus over here on the right hand side, but this is gonna be really useful. If you're really getting into this Docker stuff and you're installing a lot of different apps, I mean, I've got at least five videos on things to install, but you can imagine if you had Image and Nextcloud, You've got DSM, Synology Photos, um, whatever other apps, maybe Uptime, Kuma. You probably don't want to start memorizing all of those port numbers and IP addresses. So this is a great way to keep those organized. Even if it gets a little bit lengthy, I still think Heimdall is a great one to use. There is another one out there that I'll do a tutorial on. It's called, I think it's just called Homepage. That's another one that I use. I think it might be a little bit better suited for when you have a ton of apps, but... I think from the get-go, I think Heimdall is one of the best homepages out there. It's pretty clean. It's easy to change options, change options, change options. Like if you wanted to change that background and stuff, that stuff's pretty easy to do. So definitely a great starting place for those who've got a lot of apps starting to grow on your Synology NASs. Good luck to you.